Hi, I'm Ben from Teleport, and today I'll be reviewing how Teleport can give you better visibility for database access. Teleport's unified access plane enables engineers to quickly and securely access to be viewed anywhere. So let's dive into Teleport for database access. Database access allows access to Postgres and MySQL databases behind the NAT, prevent data exfiltration, and meet com compliance requirements. Okay, so let's see what this will look like. In my deployment, I have Teleport set up in a single instance, which is connecting to a Postgres RDS database. One of the benefits of Teleport is it lets you connect users with SSO identities, and those identities can be mapped to database users. So if you have multiple teams logging in as admin, you know which user performed the admin actions. Another benefit of using Teleport is when this user logs in, they log in for a certain period of time and they will get a short-lived certificate. In my case, I configured it for eight hours. So the user will log in, they'll get an eight hour certificate, they'll do their actions and all actions will be recorded under um, the admin user and linked to their identity. I also have FluentD running on this instance, which is gonna be shipping these logs forwards to uh, Elk Stack deployment I have. Here I have two other deployments. I have a, a Postgres and MySQL that's deployed outside of AWS and I'm using a Teleport instance using a reverse tunnel to dial back to my central cluster. So why would you want to use Teleport as opposed to more native logging? There's a few options out there. For Postgres, you have the option of using PG Audit, which is um, a great open source auditing tool. Um, this lets you capture very fine details about what's happening to the database, but can be compute intensive. MySQL has a few options, but it requires a range of configurations. One of the benefits of using Teleport is that you can use this as a central place for connecting databases, Kubernetes, servers, all in one place and have a centralized place for access and identity. Okay, so let me show you what this looks like. I've installed Teleport locally and I'm going to be using TSH. TSH is our command line tool which you use to obtain the Postgres credentials. So I'm going to TSH login, select the proxy, which is the public URL of the proxy I'm hosting, and I'm using GitHub as my identity provider. So it's gonna open a browser window. It's already authenticated since I'm already logged into GitHub. And now I can go back and you can see uh, which roles I have, which users, and I have one database here, which is a AWS RDS database. So now I've logged into Teleport itself, I need to log into the database via Teleport. So to do this, I first find out which databases I have. In my case, I only have one database, um, this AWS RDS database. So I'm going to log into that. And you can see now I'm now uh, have the connection information saved locally. And this is the 12 hour certificate that I have. And so I can now go about my day using vSQL for 12 hours. After those 12 hours, I'll need to log into Teleport again. And so here we have a sort of handy snippet to get started using vSQL. We have the service, which is the name of my cluster plus the database pre-populated. The user, we don't know that yet, but because I've configured this, I'm gonna be assuming the role of Alice and the DB name is just the default name for AWS, which is gonna be Postgres. So let me select this and um, update this, Postgres and Alice. Small typo, Alice. So here we have um, a secure connection to my Postgres database. So first up, I can just run uh, slash C. You can see I'm connected to the database Postgres as user Alice, as I sort of already knew. So now I can see the list of databases that I have here. Um, I have a few databases. Let's just get a bit more information on those. You can see they're all relatively small for my demo cluster. Um, but now we can just quit and let's go in to see what has been captured by Teleport. So I come to the web UI here, log in again. And under activity, audit log, you can see that I have the commands that I ran. Um, these are slightly different because Teleport works at the protocol level, you will get more detailed information about what was running when I ran slash C slash DT and um, all of these queries are started and ended. And so you can see here, I disconnected and um, I connected to the database. And so all this information, we're gonna ship off to our um, L stack. 
Okay, so let's see what these JSON events look like. As you can see here, relatively simple JSON events. You know, we have the database um, URI, user, um, what happened, and um, this can be very helpful, but it's all in Teleport. It's help very, more useful to ship it off to somewhere else. FluentD is a popular open source data collector that can unify all of your logs. I have this set up on my Teleport node. Um, this is run on the same instance, and this is shipping it off. My configuration is set up to uh, tail everything under varlib teleport log dot star. And so this captures everything under the logs, and I'm passing the logs. And then here, I'm matching everything with ES, which matches everything for the Elasticsearch service, tagging them, and I'm sending them to my S3 endpoint. So from here, these logs come in, and um, eventually they come in here. This dashboard has been created by myself. You may want to start here with Visualize, um, like Discover, and um, Discover is a great place to see log data, and you can see the same JSON events which you see in the Teleport UI, and you can index these and set alerts on them. It's an overview of how you can use Teleport to link identity to database user using your SSO provider use Teleport as a central unified access gateway, and then how you can use FluentD to ship those logs off to Elasticsearch. If you're interested in learning more, you can come along to goteleport.com database access, and you can learn more about how you can get started using Teleport. Thank you.